Guys, thanks for joining us. Um, we'll start with opening statements. We'll go to Dennis first, and then Chris, and then we'll take your questions. Good afternoon and welcome. Um, it is my pleasure today to uh, introduce Chris Harmers as the new head coach for the New York Red Bulls. I've known Chris for over 20 years. Uh, I had the pleasure to coach him in Chicago, uh, be on my staff, uh, one of my assistant coaches. Got to work with him here as an assistant coach in, in New York. And now it is truly an honor to uh, appoint him as a, as a new head coach. You know, when you think about Chris Harmers, there's a couple of things that come to mind. Flat out, he's a winner. Uh, he's shown that uh, his playing days in, in, in Chicago, and he's continued to do that. Uh, he's a competitor. Uh, for me, the one thing when you go back and you watch uh, when he played in the midfield and his ability to compete at the highest level, it's an amazing trait. And his ability to sort of portray that to our guys is going to be important. Uh, his understanding of our tactics, our philosophy, and our commitment to it. We are not going to change the way we play. Uh, and that's important for the coach that's on board to understand that. And more importantly, I think when you look at the body of work that he has, I think it makes a perfect sense for me that he's going to be our leader uh, moving forward. So congratulations and welcome. Thank you, Dan. Thank right. you very much. But before, I just wanted to just take a quick moment just to thank Jesse Marsh. Uh, I've known Jesse for a long time. He played a key role here with us in his three and a half years in terms of our club identity and also our playing style. I want to wish him, Kim, and his kids, Emmy, Lennon, and Maddox, all the best in the next journey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, look, I'll say a few things. Uh, I'm so excited. Um, I'm a New Yorker through and through. This is my, my the place where I grew up, uh, playing soccer uh, since yay big, but 20, 20 something years now in Major League Soccer. Um, I'm excited to get going. As a New Yorker, born in the Bronx, my family's from the Bronx, where my family's at. Seeing this club from, from the very beginning, uh, I'm really excited to get going. Uh, before the work, it's a lot of work to do. Of course, um, I'm just grateful. Um, there's a few individuals, you know, Mark the Grand Prix, uh, Dennis, um, yourself, you know, it'd be an honor to work with you on a different level now. Um, but yeah, Dennis and Mark, uh, the leader of the organization, um, entrusting me to, to take this thing forward. Um, again, it's an honor. And then, of course, um, as Dennis alluded to, uh, Jesse, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard even in a few minutes to, to show the gratitude and, and thanks and what Jesse's meant to me and the club. And I think people uh, will understand that. But um you know, from a soccer perspective, incredible. The tactics, what he's done with the team, uh, second to, to none, and, and it's remarkable. The club, the academy, through the USL, the culture here, um, fantastic. But even on a personal level, the, the time me and Jesse have spent, more than people will understand, you know, the work that he puts in, the, the leadership style, like, uh, and, and of course, again, the friendship that will last forever. So to, to Jesse Marsh, uh, can't say enough about Jess, but we'll, we'll miss him. And, and of course, it, for me, um, it has made the process even here in the last few days bittersweet because it's uh, hard to be so excited for, for what's ahead without uh, having to miss uh, what, already Jesse. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get going. Uh, no better way to start in a few days in a derby match with New York City. Thanks, Essel. Yeah, we'll just take questions. Chris, uh, taking over for Jesse on uh, a day or two before the big match down at the in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. Uh, obviously, you don't prepare for these things that happen so quickly. But uh, for your first match, would that be bittersweet to play in the, to manage that one as your first game? Uh, Dan, right? Yes. Dan, this this for me, it's no no bitterness to it. It's only sweet. It's it's a great team we're playing against. It's a derby match. It's New York. Uh, it's the Bronx. It's um, two teams that are fighting for the standings right there. Um, and there's no better way. We, we're ready as a team. You can see it in the standings, what the team's all about. We're, we're again, Dennis, the, the roster he's put together here. We On all levels, the team is ready. I'm ready. And, and then I'll tell you, you know, sometimes when things come quickly like this, perfect. Perfect that... Um, 
you know, these games come quickly and you get thrown right into it. So I'm excited, guys, and uh, yeah, perfect way to start. For, uh, for, for both of you guys, uh, change is always a little bit tricky, especially in midseason, but I think you alluded to it before. Uh, I don't think you probably could have asked for a more seamless transition in, in everything, right, that you guys mm -hmm. do than, than having Chris just move his seat over. Yeah, look, I think it, it's it's important, you know, in terms of when, when we kind of identify players, we want to make sure that they fit into our system. And, and part of the process from our academy all the way up to our second team to our first team is, is to also educate the coaches to understand how we play, so prepare them for their next step because you never know in life when your opportunity is going to come. And so, you know, in my position, I want to make sure now that you, 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 you plan the right way so if something like this happens, then you're ready you don't have to look outside, you can look inside to make sure now you have someone in place. And like I said, the most important part is having someone who understands how we play and how we do things because that's not going to change. And I think that's key. And, and so that made the, the decision so much easier. Chris, can you just kind of take us through? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, look, I, I, uh, I've been around for, for Jesse's tenure here, right? So I understand um, more than ever the philosophy, the tactics, the way we play, the personnel, the depth, USL, Academy, I've invested myself completely in, in this club. Um, but probably most of all that would help in a transition here, and I can see it over two days, is um, there's respect that, that I've given, that I've gotten from guys, and I can feel that, that there's real support from the players, and at the end of it, that's what it's about. The players in, in, in our circle, um, you know, how we're going to push forward. So I think there's a, a built-in trust and, and uh, relationships are, are there and established, so it's it's to build on that, uh, just with a different voice. But uh, listen, I'm excited and ready for for this leadership role and to push this group. Well, your first head coaching job was at Adelphi, and yeah. you did some assistant coaching around the league. And yeah. Now here, can you just talk about your growth as a head coach and also how the opportunities to take over some of the team sessions when Jesse was at UEFA license or when you had to come in an interim coach help prepare you for this step? Yeah, look, I'll tell you, you know, I, I've been preparing, it sounds, I don't know, cliche, my whole life for this moment. Um, the dream was to, to be a pro soccer player. And when I was in college, my mom wanted to know what, what to study. And I said, Mom, I'm, I want to be a pro. Well, Chris, there's no pro league. <laughs> I'm just telling you, ask the question. I said, what I want to do. And sure enough, the timing was right. It worked out. Things have worked out for me that way. And I put myself in spots for that to happen. It's always been through hard work and, and relentless to, 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 the, to the goal. And, uh, you know, the next step was then, of course, when you realize you can't play anymore, you can't play forever. Um, I'm a teacher, I'm a coach, and I was doing a lot of that as a player. You know, I was, I was a captain of my team the last so many years, and I've been around some really good leaders. He's one of them. Dave Sarek and Bruce Arena at uh, the national team level, Bob Bradley, uh, Juan Carlos Osorio, Alfonso Mandela, Bob Montgomery, Manny Shasha. I've just been so fortunate to be around these gentlemen. And uh, I'm always watching and learning and listening and picking up as much as I can. So I have been preparing. But of course, yeah, now in a different role. By the way, Jesse Marsh, four years. Like, we spent too much time together, me and Jesse, like, on the phone, on the trips. But what a time we've spent together. And he epitomizes leadership so I've been taking it in learning along the way as a player again and uh, it's worked for me I've, I've led teams to trophies I've, I've been part of winning in a in a leadership role so you got to start somewhere in, in, at this level as a, as a head coach and it was going to happen eventually I took the job four years ago not to be an assistant coach forever it was coming and now it's just a dream come true to be right here uh, again I can't wait for this chance and uh, the, the the leadership of, of this team is, is, I'm ready for it, guys. Two questions from me. Uh, what did Jesse say to you when he was on his way to Germany and uh, your first, actually, MLS or Open Cup match was last year against New York City FC at Red Bull Arena, the one nothing win. Does that also help prepare you for this position you're taking over right now? Yeah, listen, just on the, on the Jesse question, like Jesse would, he only gave the biggest hug, biggest support. We were both emotional about the whole thing. It's, it's an incredible moment for each of us. It's hard for me to be excited uh, for my own thing because I'm excited for him and how's he feeling? I mean, it's like my brother, you know? And, and 
but he only wished the, the, the greatest of support and, and told me that I'd be his big, biggest fan. He can't wait to see him on the sideline. And Chris, you're ready. And then, of course, you know, he stands in front of the team and tells them, Chris is ready. Support Chris. You know, you guys got this. You're so lucky. And then, uh, yeah, so only support from Jess. Um, yeah, in, in the Open Cup last year, it gives you a little uh, glimpse of, of stepping into that role for the week as, as, uh, as what, it, what it means to be in charge. And, again, I, I don't overthink those days. Doing my job, I'm stepping in for Jesse, and we're going to keep this thing going for those five days. So... I think it gave me a chance on the sideline to, to get a, a taste of that. Uh, of course, on the day it was about winning and advancing, which we did. And uh, yeah, it felt comfortable and, and gives me confidence even now to step into this role. And, yeah, I'm ready for this, guys. Yeah. Dennis, uh, you mentioned obviously when Chris was a player, and, and Chris just alluded to it, just the leadership, the, the, the kind of the coach on the field. Were there moments that you remember? Uh, even back then, where you'd say, you know what, at some point in, in the future, you know, he'll he'll make a good coach. Yeah, there are, there are many. You know, um, you know, he just had a, an uncanny ability just to lead by example. You know, I, I think uh, when you watch them play, uh, I always go back to the, the game against New England. Uh, when he scores the winning goal and he takes his gloves off and he throws it in, in the air as he's running back celebrating and just the joy that he had, uh, but he just brought it every day. In training sessions, on the field, he just led by example. And you could see his ability to to sort of connect with people and bring them on board and, and get them to sort of push themselves to the next level. I, I think you start to see signs of, you know, when, you, when you're the captain, you see signs that these are th qualities that you're gonna have to become a good coach. And, and so from day one, he had it. You know, he had it when he played with the national team, he had it when he played with Chicago, and, and so, you know, one of my first moves I did was, was hire him as one of my assistant coaches. So, you know, I think he stayed for one year, then he had to come back to New York. So I figured if I'm getting him a chance to hire him again, it would be here in New York. And so that day it's come, it's almost 20 years ago. So I was going to say, what advice have you given Chris as well since, you know, you were not just assistant coaches with mm -hmm. each other here, but also when you were managing Chicago mm -hmm. back in those days? You know, look, I think it, it's, it's a, life's about opportunities, you know. Uh, I told him, I said, you know, for me, it took over 10 years to get the head coach in Chicago. You know, uh, I learned under Bob, under Dave, under Juan Carlos, and finally my opportunity came with it. And I said, when that moment comes, run with it. You run with it and you do the best that you can. And I think, uh, you know, he's he's prepared himself for that moment. And, and so I know that he will do fine and he's going to run with it and he's not going to let it go. What does the timetable look like this week? Obviously, taking over, you've got a big match on Sunday. Uh, it means anything accelerated. Uh, I know Jesse has you in charge of the film study and, and certain aspects, but just a little bit longer days probably the next couple of 48 hours, if that's possible. Yeah, it was, it, it's just a, a, um, in terms of time, it doesn't, I mean, we're always working, but it, it's, it's a big shift in, in, in what I'm thinking about. And the challenge is like uh, a few hours you're home with the kids and the wife just to shut it off for a little bit. But it, it, listen, I think my whole family and myself, we understand that in the, in the first few days here as things have come quickly, just to wrap my mind around uh, what's needed and then to just do whatever you have to do to do what's needed. Um, which I'm a worker at the core of me. That's how my family was. My dad he always had a saying that you have to earn it. You know, he always said it. He would take the soccer ball in the backyard and he's a guy who grew up playing baseball in the Bronx and uh, he would his heel hit the ball the other way and say, you dad, give me the ball. You have to earn it. And I would chase him and he'd hold me up and I, would, I wouldn't stop. And I was, um, he was a guy that worked many jobs and, and had to walk to work a mile and, and had holes in his shoes at one point in his life. But he worked and he taught us to work. So for me to have to put in some more hours to think about the staff and talking to the staff and talking to the players and what am I going to say and tactics in New York City and film and think about certain players and the, and the starting lineup and what do we do with the other guys and time of the meal. Yeah, there's tons of things. But again, I've been doing this stuff in my mind for a few years as I've watched closely and paid attention. So yeah, it's, it's it feels like uh, it's comfortable because I feel like I've been doing this all along. And just Dennis, I know uh, Chris and Jesse used to have phone calls with each other every morning on the car rides. 
into work. Did you guys have your first phone call this morning on the car ride in? Or? No. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but I'm there. I'm available if he wants to call me. But uh, look, we've got a good relationship. So, uh, like I said, it, it goes back 20 years, and and it's sort of it's the foundation of, of just a mutual respect for each other. You know, I think that that's that's the core of it. Uh, and so he knows I'm, I'm, I'm his biggest support. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that he's he succeeds because I think at the end that's what we all want. And and so we're in this together, and and we're looking forward to the to the challenge and and, and making sure we finish the second half of the season the way we started it. Chris, you you, you mentioned a bunch of the names uh, of guys who uh, you played under. Uh, I'm wondering if if along that whole way, even if you didn't know it at the time, do you take a little bit from, from each guy, from their coaching experience, and kind of make it into into your own, you know, whether it was uh, Juan Carlos or, or Bruce or, or Sarah or any of those guys? I'll tell you, you, you never try to replicate or copy Jesse. Uh, I didn't mention Lothar Osiander, my first Major League Soccer coach, and Octavio Zambrano and his others, but I was always listening and taking, and, and some of it was, hey, that's really good, and some of it's like, Chris, don't ever do that, <laughs> you know, really, you know, I didn't like the way you treated that guy, you know, there's a different way you could handle that, and there's sometimes the session, they're really good, the practices, and sometimes it's, you know, some, some of those coaches were really organized and had something different every day, and it was really good, and, and then... I was like Bob Bradley, I mean, fantastic man manager and, and details, and it was relentless. You know, I, I love that. That that's going to be part of me. So he just kept taking and, and maybe deleting and adding. So, and then and then you run your own race. It's time to run my own race. You know, you, you can't talk this talk, and then you get there and you're like, well, let me be like, no, it's about my time, and then I put a stamp on this team, which is already good. It's not my opinion, right? The standings, we're we're high up there. We we win. Uh, most of our games, we win at home. We have the best fans in the league. Our stadium is incredible. The field is immaculate. The building, I mean, it's, I don't have to say that. People who know, it's, it's perfect. So we have everything there for success, and now it's, it's my time to put a stamp on this, and which, which is the details, the work ethic, the honesty, the, the every day coming to work with good energy and a winning mentality and not letting that slip every day. I've learned that from some of the, my best coaches and mentors, and... I understand what it's supposed to look like on a daily basis, so I'm excited to, Talk to about, run with it. For two more guys. Talk about techniques and tactics, pretty much being the same, and you guys know what the identity of your team is. How's your style going to be different than, than Jesse's? I know some of the guys have said in the past, you like to interject some humor in some different ways. And I mean, how are you going to do things just a little bit differently so it's, it's your coaching style? Yeah, look, the humor one is funny because I think even today, the tone of our meeting that we have with the guys, like, I, I'm not. I think people who really know me and guys that even played against me. I'm a nice guy, and and you know I can take a give and take a joke here and there, but I'm it's business for me. I'm not messing around like, and then guys have to understand it. And and again, people who know me know that there's one goal in mind, and it's it's a shiny thing that you know we haven't had here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm focused on that, and and yeah, to your question specifically, um, you know I, I think that you know it, it's. It's something that I have to set a tone here in how I work and, and how I prepare. And, and look, I, I think it could get distracted. And, and for me, these, these first few days have been interesting in that, in that way, just to kind of understand and set a certain tone of, of what it's like around here. So um, yeah, I'm focused on that and comfortable on that and, and, and ready to go. Tell us a better joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two, two parter, obviously, with Chris moving over, there's the potential vacancy as an assistant coach. Has that process begun? Is that also, do you feel, going to be an internal one? or? No, we're in the process of uh, bringing in uh, another coach to make sure we uh, complement the, the, the staff because I know it's important. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, and so we want to make sure that he's well equipped for that. So, yes, uh, we're in the process, and hopefully we'll have an announcement soon. Uh, and, then, and then the window uh, is coming up. Mm -hmm. How active do you, do you believe that you'll be? Is there spots? Uh, I know outside back is one mm -hmm. where you maybe you want some depth. Uh, maybe up front, are there positions that you're kind of looking at? Yeah, look, you know, I think uh, for us, it is, we're, we're constantly looking. Look, first of all, we're happy with the roster currently where it's at. Uh, that's the most important part uh, because I think it speaks for itself in terms of what we've been able to do across all three competitions. Uh, secondly, I think we also know we have Red Bull too uh, in terms of we want to look 
uh, in-house sometimes uh, before we go outside. And so we feel we're in a good position. Uh, we're going to be very uh, picky to make sure that the right player that we bring in or two makes sense in terms of short-term and long-term. Uh, we want to make sure we make the right decision. And so you know, we, we have a scouting team uh, that we're constantly looking to make sure that uh, we identify the right guys, and uh, you know, if, the, if it makes sense on both sides of uh, of the coin, then we'll make sure we bring that player in. Chris Dennis, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you very much.